a little bit more self-love. There's still self-love series, but there's a couple more things I want to say about Mary Mudd and Malcolm X Debate Club here at University of Louisville. And it's only Malcolm X and name only. They don't believe in anything that Malcolm X actually stood for, especially solidarity and uh, standing up against the oppressors. They want to hand me Pedagogy of the Oppressed book, and then they're going to be the oppressors. And then they're going to look at me like I'm fucking crazy because I actually read the fucking book and I realized that, you know, we're co-creators of knowledge. You want to just talk at me and prescribe your fucking thoughts on my brain? And I'm just supposed to accept it like it's, you know, the gospel truth? Nah, you're, you're a guide by the side, or you're not a sage on the stage. I'm not going to sit up there and just admire you as if you got a shitload of fucking knowledge, and I should just, you know, worship and grovel and just, you know, bow down to you. That is not how life works. I, I don't know anybody who succeeds and, and, and goes through life like that. Two things I would say uh, about privilege. They want to sit there and tell poor white people how much privilege they have. Um, poor, including homeless people, right? So, like, uh, while they do have white privilege, something that Mary Mudd has a lot of privilege of, but a homeless white person doesn't have privilege, is the privilege of food. And she loves her food. I mean, look at her. I mean, she come out of the trailer park, that's clear. Uh, but you didn't have to actually take the obesity of the trailer park. You didn't actually have to take, um, you know, all the uh, weight problems from the trailer park. Uh, you want to sit there and say how much privilege white homeless people have? Uh, every time you put a mi Big Mac into your mouth, every time you shove, you know, uh, a double state porterhouse, uh, double decker, extra cheese, you know, clogger, every time you want to shove your mouth with some food, that's a privilege that 30,000 children every day don't have. In fact, they ha they starve to death. So every time you eat, think Thank your blessings. Thank the good Lord. Thank you. Thank whatever. Thank the privilege that you have to eat because it's a privilege to eat. It's a privilege to put a piece of food in your mouth. That's a privilege. You don't want to hear about that? Well, it's something that homeless people don't get experience that you get experience on a day-to-day -day basis, Mary Mud. Mary Mud, you've been eating. you got a house. you got shelter. you got a decent job. you got transportation. Jesus Christ, you don't sit there and say how privileged I am? Fuck you. Every bit of things I just said... Is it something that you have over me? Fuck you. Don't sit there and tell me I'm fucking privileged. Fuck you. So, so yeah. Somet sometimes it's a, there's an intellectual argument. Other times it's a, they're arguing against my fucking soul. And they're fucking arguing against my fucking soul. Their ideas smash me into oblivion. Then you can fucking manipulate me however you want to manipulate me. I'm so fucking tired of people manipulating me. So, I know, it's three minutes, but, um, so, yeah, okay, um, y'all, right, <laughs> when, plus, like, to the rich white people that run the rich white aristocracy of Louisville, we're all niggers, we're all cheap fucking labor, they want to pay us minimum wage or less, you know, they don't want to hire anybody else, they want to say rich people are job creators, fuck you, fuck that shit, too. Yeah, Mary Mud, you want to defend the fucking rich people all the time? Fuck you all. Fuck you rich one percenters. You fucking Jake Payne. You guys are the gatekeepers. You're the old fucking liberal guard, and you all got your fucking power, and you could help other fucking people get access into the system, but that ain't what you're doing. You got power for yourself, and now you're keeping it for yourself, and you're trying to fuck everybody else. And that ain't right. To the rich white Louisville aristocracy, you ain't standing up to them. You ain't talking about revolution. You want to talk about being an activist? Y'all ain't no fucking activist. What the fuck are you all ever changed? Y'all changed shit? Y'all don't even have democracy in your all's ranks. Do you know what democracy even looks like? Do any of y'all know what democracy looks like? So, love, 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 love. I always think about all the different view virtues that we have, you know. And I do think about this a lot, so I... I don't know, Aquinas and a lot of your old ancient people thought about this stuff, justice, and uh, I, I don't know, I think it's good conversations to actually talk about these things, emotions and virtue, so freedom, peace, justice, happiness, love, um, 
these are virtues, you know, you also got like uh, hate and revenge and sadness and different emotions uh, in addition to virtue. So out of all those things, out of everything that you could, all feelings of emotions or, um, um, you know, uh, love of ideals, which one reigns supreme? And in my mind, you always had like love and freedoms, like always battling it out. Like, no, you know, no, love is more important, but freedom is more important. And I think what I've eventually figured out is, like, I get freedom through love, okay? When you're fighting for somebody and you love somebody, you you got a reason to fight. You got a reason to die. You got a reason to stand up. You got a reason to stick your neck out. So when you love somebody, that gives you a reason. And I'm my younger brother, Kurt, my younger brother, Kurt Daniel, he uh was getting into Greek mythology, and he was thinking a lot about emotions, too. And he says uh, that love is what starts everything all other emotions comes from love jealousy comes from love revenge comes from love uh, hate comes from love and he says all the other emotions comes out of love so love is you know his argument was love is bad because of that because all the other ones come out of it but uh, my understanding of what he was saying actually is that love is fundamental because from love that gives you the platform from which all the other virtues spread out from so jealousy is wrong, that's true, but I also feel like some jealousy is natural in a relationship, and some jealousy is saying, I don't want to lose you, and I don't want you to, you know, have another relationship with somebody else, I don't want that, you know, just to stem off into something else, and that means you love them, you love them so much that you want to hold on to them, but you also love them enough to give them freedom, right, so through love, you get freedom through each other, uh, because if someone loves you, then it's like, be yourself. I want you to be yourself, and I want you to be happy and enjoy life. That's love. So you get freedom that way, but you also get freedom. Uh, I feel liberated when I fight for other people. I can defend myself, but I don't do that as much. When I'm fighting for somebody else, it's so much easier. When I'm standing up or fighting for somebody else, I feel like, you know what? I love this person, and I'm going to say something about it. And I'm more passionate. I'm more... Uh, vigorous with that approach so love love there's um something else uh, uh, Che Guevara he says about love as ironic as it sounds a true revolutionary has great feelings of love so I'll repeat that because I think it's extraordinarily important as ironic as it sounds a true revolutionary has great feelings of love it's ironic because why do you want to fight the system? If you want to say you love, then how can you, you know, if you're filled with um, rage and you're wanting to fight the system and take uh, the system down, right, you're, you want revolution to happen, how can you say that's love? How can you say fight fighting is, is for love? I mean, I think if fighting isn't for love, that's when it's a crime. When you're fighting just to be fighting, just to be hitting other people, or fighting because you want to take their stuff, or fighting because you don't like them, um, that's that's when it's wrong, but when you're fighting for love, that's when it matters. Self-defense is the only time fighting's allowed, or the only time it's justified, and those are the times when love is present. Self-defense. I love myself, so therefore I will defend myself. Self-defense is intelligence. You want to attack me, I'm going to attack you back. And it's not because I want to hurt you, but it's because I don't want you to hurt me. And you need to know that I don't want to be hurt. So if you're going to hurt me, then i got to do some damage to you. Enough damage to make sure that you back the fuck up and don't don't ever do it again. That's not how it always works. Um, but that's, you know, that's the only way you can deal with a bully. That's the only way to deal with a bully. If you uh, capitulate and let them push you around, they'll push you around your whole fucking life. So, yeah. So, you should stand up to bullies. But love, love, love. <laughs> um... I got nine minutes. I mean, so that means I got I got six minutes. Yeah, all right. So Emma Goldman. I think of Emma Goldman. Emma Goldman had a lot of things that she said about love. I kind of actually want to start with my next video with Emma Goldman, so that way it's all about love. It's pure pure about love, and I'm not going on for five minutes about how Mary Mudd's a fucking asshole. <laughs> She's such a dickhead. Mary Mudd, you're a dickhead. I sit and uh, beat myself up over this. I really wanted to get into the the club. It's Malcolm X, and I I I love Malcolm X, and I love his message, and I'll carry his message forward any way and any way possible anywhere I go. So, Malcolm X, uh, you can't you can't take the Malcolm X out of a person once he's in you. So, 
Uh, I wanted to be on the club, but fuck them. They, they didn't give a shit. And, like, it sucks because, like, I'm not hating the whole club, but it's not, there was no solidarity. It wasn't like, hey, no, he's he's good. We need to get him on the team so that way we have talented people on this team and we'll actually win. And you would have won. You would have won a shitload of fucking contests if I was there. I would have challenged you all just as much as you all are challenging me, but we would have all grown and got smarter because of it. Instead, we're, uh, you know, we're where we're at now. We're all separated, and uh, maybe you guys are together. I don't I don't know. I don't give a shit. But the, uh, you know, it's kind of like torture somebody. When somebody's been kicked out and you've done said, well, I'm not going to fucking say nothing about it. I'm not going to stand up for them. Well, fuck you too. You're going along with the fucking crowd. So you see that the bus is segregated and you see that there's segregation going on, but you're not going to say or do anything about it. All right, whatever. Fuck you. I'll fight this revolutionary fight myself. And then Debo wants to say, are you an activist? Yeah. Yeah, I am more of a social activist than you will ever be than you will ever be. You're not changing anything. You're being dicks to fucking people who care. That's all you're fucking doing. Love. Love, love, love. Okay, so love. Emma Goldman did say something about love. Uh, you give yourself completely to somebody else and they give themselves completely to you. And that's the love. That's the only way to love. Give yourself totally to somebody and then they to you. Now, what that meant to me was, like, you're giving them, like, obedience. I'll do whatever you want, and I'll do what you want. Um, but then at the same time, you got to remain some of yourself, right? you got to hold some of yourself. So you got yourself, then you got the, the we, me and you together. Um, so I think those two things, I think there's a balance between those things. But I was talking to one of my friends, and he says, no, not obedience. not the, Faithful, you could be faithful, but not obedient. I don't know. I think you got to be obedient to each other. If I, you know, if I really want my significant other to think this way or look this way, I'm going to be like, look, look, like, you have to side with me on this. <laughs> you know, like, you have to side with me. I need your love. I need your, you know, I need you on my side. And I would like to think that they could say the exact same to me. Uh, I feel as though my, um, you know, my wife, my significant other, if they had put enough pressure on me and they said, hey, I really want this thing to happen, I would I would capitulate. I would do it. If it's that important for somebody to keep on, you know, pestering somebody about for like weeks on end or maybe just a day and just a real fucking, you know, a temper tantrum or some shit, if it's that important to you, I'd like to think I'd talk to him in a day and just say, well, you know, in a day, maybe later on, I'm not for sure, um... You're having all these feelings now, but let's sleep on it, and then we'll come back and then see how you feel later. Uh, I think I would probably want to do something like that if you were willing to pressure me to do something I really felt uncomfortable about doing. Uh, but ultimately, I love them, and I love them, and if they, this is what would make them happy, if I, they want me to do so-and-so and to make them happy, then I would do it. I would be there for them. Unconditional love. And unconditional love isn't doing anything that they want you to do. Uh, but sometimes people are asking you to do something because they want to know that you love them. So, you know, give me a call and tell me that you love me just because I want to know that you love me. And is that, that isn't that big of a demand, but it's something I am I would ask for. It's something I need. I, need. I do need to feel like I'm loved. Uh, that's a human need. Maslow points out it's a human need amongst all of us to feel like we want to be loved. In fact, it was the third one on the bottom. There's seven layers of Maslow's hierarchy, and the third one from the bottom is belonging and love. So the first one is physiological and biological needs, and the next one is feelings of safety, and then the ones after that is uh, 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 love and belonging. So love should be right there on the third layer. Then the fourth layer is self-esteem, and then intellectual, and then aesthetic uh, balancing out beauty in life and then self-actualization so love, love, love I fucking love love I love love I think love is wonderful I think love is grand I think you get freedom out of love I think freedom and love are dancing together they are one and the same You know, kind of like the bird they say if you love something you let it go and if it comes back to you then it was meant to be and if they if it keeps on going, then it never was. So, like, it never was meant to be. So, that's that's what love is. You love somebody, you let it go, and when they come back to you, then that's when you know that, you know, they're yours. So, it's not like I'm pounding somebody in the submission saying, this is what, you know, you have to do for me. But it's saying, this is what I need for you to, you know, for me to feel loved. 
So it's a dance. There's a communication there to it. Um, I was gonna, I'm going to define. There's an urban dictionary about what love is. I guess I can I can talk about love for an hour or so. <laughs> uh, yeah. So love America, Louisville. Love, love yourself. Love others. Love everybody. Jesus says love your enemies. I don't know if I go that far, but that's pretty revolutionary stuff. Peace, Louisville.